I mentioned earlier that the purpose of drawing resonance structures is to figure out where the charges are. Uh, but why do we care so much about where the charges are? Well, there's a couple uh, very important um, reasons. Basically, in organic chemistry, we're trying, to be, um, we're trying to predict what reaction is going to happen. Well, what does it mean to predict what reaction is going to happen? You need to predict which atom in one molecule is going to react with which atom in the other molecule. So you have to find the most reactive atoms in the molecules. Well, the reactive atoms tend to be the atoms that have the charges. Remember that the charges are the, what make you unstable and reactive and unhappy. Anything that's unhappy or unstable and reactive, that's an atom that's likely to want to go through a reaction. And on the other hand, any atom that doesn't have any charge is likely not to be very reactive. Um, so for example, if we take a look at this enolate ion over here, um, which of the atoms here do we expect to um, be reactive and to be involved in a reaction? Um, well, looking at this picture, we would expect the oxygen to be involved in a reaction because it has a negative charge. It's likely to try to donate its electrons to um, an atom in another molecule to try to get rid of some of that electron density. Well, that certainly could happen. However, now we know that when we draw the other resonance structure, there's also a negative charge on this carbon. There's another resonance structure with a negative charge on this carbon. Well, that indicates that maybe if a reaction happens, maybe actually it's going to be this carbon that's reactive. And maybe it's this carbon that's going to be forming a bond to another atom. And actually, it turns out that that is the way that enolates usually react. It's actually more common for the enolate to react at this carbon than at this oxygen. Well, you can see how important it is to draw the resonance structures. If you only looked at this one resonance structure, you'd have no idea of how reactive this carbon was um, over here. And you can also see how important it is to get the charges right. Um, there would be no point drawing this resonance structure if we didn't show the negative charge on the carbon, because the whole reason why this is interesting is that it shows us that this carbon has a negative charge, and so it's eager to react by donating electrons to another atom in another molecule. We can see a similar idea down here for acetone. Um, let's say that we expect this acetone molecule to get attacked by um, another molecule. Um, we expect this to receive electrons from another molecule. Well, which of the carbons, uh, which of the atoms here is going to be reactive? Which of these atoms is eager to gain electrons? Well, if you just look at this picture here, it looks like everybody is kind of neutral. Nobody here really seems to have a formal charge, so it might be a little bit difficult to predict which of these atoms would be eager to gain electrons. But then when we draw another resonance structure, we can say that actually there is some positive charge on this carbon down here. In this resonance structure, we see some positive charge on this carbon. So that indicates that if there's another molecule out there that wants to donate electrons, it's probably going to donate electrons to this carbon, certainly not to this oxygen. Well, again, we can see the importance of drawing the resonance structures. If we just look at this uh, picture over here, it seems like all of the atoms here are happy and stable and unreactive. But then when we draw this picture, we can see this carbon actually is not that happy and um, is willing to gain some electrons because it has this positive charge. Uh, of course, it's also possible that maybe this oxygen could react by donating electrons to somebody. Uh, that can also sometimes happen, although you're usually going to focus more on the reactions where you attack the carbon down here. Again, this shows us that the whole purpose of drawing resonance structures is to find where the charges are. Um, so there would be no point drawing this resonance structure over here if you didn't get the charges right. If you got everything right about this picture except the charges, um, that would be just as bad as if you hadn't drawn it in the first place. If you don't put the charges in, um, then you can't figure out which atoms are going to be reactive, and you can't figure out which atoms want to donate electrons and which atoms want to receive electrons. So we really have to focus on getting the charges right. Uh, something else that we can see from the last two examples that I gave is that um, sometimes the less significant resonance structures give you more information about how a molecule is going to react. Um, for example, remember up here, um, we, um, I mentioned that um, if you, uh, when we look at these resonance structures, we can see in this resonance structure, it looks like this oxygen is eager to react by donating electrons. And in this resonance structure, it looks like this carbon is eager to react by donating electrons. Well, it just so happens that in most of the reactions you're going to see in your course, it's actually this carbon that's going to be donating the electrons, not this oxygen. Um, even though we already said this resonance structure is less significant. 
So this shows that even if a resonance structure is less significant, that does not mean you should leave it out. Sometimes the less significant resonance structure plays a very big role in determining how the molecule is going to react. Now, of course, you wouldn't want to draw a resonance structure that's totally insignificant. We saw an example of that earlier for acetone. Um, but as long as the resonance structure has a fair amount of significance, it's still very important to draw it, even if it's not the most significant resonance structure. Uh, because again, even if something is less significant than another resonance structure, it still might actually uh, play a more important role in predicting how the molecule is going to react. And the same thing is true for acetone down here. Um, this resonance structure over here is definitely more significant than the resonance structure on the right because um, in this structure on the right we have charges and an incomplete octet. But if you're trying to predict how the molecule is going to react, it's actually much more useful to think about this resonance structure because this is the one that has the charges. If you're just looking at this resonance structure, it's a little bit harder to see where this is going to react. Um, now, I should say that there's other things we can say about acetone. There are some other reasons for expecting um, an attack on this carbon besides this resonance structure. Um, over here. So I'm not saying that resonance is the only way to analyze this, uh, but certainly uh, the resonance helps us to see um, why this carbon is reactive and it can be attacked by somebody else who wants to donate electrons. Even though this resonance structure is less significant than the resonance structure on the left, it was still very important to draw it in order to predict how the molecule was going to react.